Hi there. Um, my name is Scott Bivin. I am an artist and an inventor. And I go by the stage name Groucho Fractal. And then the name of my show is Groucho Fractal's Nearly Amazing Quantum Transdimensional Survival Guide at the End and Beginning of Everything, which, as far as I know, is the only bicycle-powered stage show using brain-computer interface as a way of generating 3D vector graphics which are then printed on a 3D printer using organic fair trade raw almond paste ground up by the audience members in a bike powered blender, which then the audience eats, um, based in West Philadelphia. I think there are probably some other shows just like this elsewhere. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, I'm going to uh, show you a couple of things today. Uh, a couple of things are working, a couple of things are not working, but that's okay because we'll get through this and we'll get through this quickly. So one of the things that I really love to do with the Groucho Fractal Show is bring together unlikely ideas and combine them. It can be in technology, it can be in, uh, it can be in literature. It's basically this whole idea of creating systems in unlikely uh, ways. And um, so what I will show you guys first is um, piece number one. This is a bicycle. Yes, this is a normal, ordinary bicycle that you can pedal on. Uh, what makes it a kind of uh, unique is that we've taken the tire off of this and we've put a belt on here and attached this belt to this 24 volt DC motor. We made a 3D printed part that attached this, attaches this motor, uh, sorry, attaches uh, the belt to the motor via a pulley. Um, now the pulley itself came from an auto part. It was, a, it was an idler pulley from a, from a Ford engine. And what we did was we took it off and we took a grinder and ground out the lip that held a bearing in there. And, that's, and, uh, and then we were able to put a 3D printed part in here so that it can spin. Now, a motor is a generator as well if you spin the motor. And if you attach a, um, if you attach a diode to it um, so that it directs the current. So the concept behind this is that we take the bicycle and the bicycle when somebody, somebody, uh, when somebody is pedaling the bicycle, um, it generates electricity that comes over to this microgrid. This microgrid consists of a pack of supercapacitors. There are 10 2.7 volt supercapacitors uh, at 350 farads a piece, which means that the whole pack is 27 volts and 35 farads. And that's, uh, it's an amazing uh, taser right there, um, if somebody were to use it as such. Um, it's also uh, connected to a 12 volt deep cycle battery. Now, the reason why we're connecting these two is that with, with a battery, if you're just, uh, if you're using this to power your grid, the battery gradually kind of droops in terms of the amount of power that's coming out of it. So if you attach uh, capacitors to it, what it does is it keeps the levels high enough so that you don't have a drop off. It's a very, uh, very fun uh, thing that we came up with. And uh, yeah, and this is one of the open source concepts behind uh, what we do is basically we uh, we being this kind of organization that I'm part of called Sufficiently Advanced Technologies. Um, we're basically just a group of geeks getting together and figuring out ideas which we can open source, which people can make use of in the world. So um, if you're planning on making a microgrid, this is a pretty good setup. And this is attached to a power inverter. Now we could go off of DC directly, but one of the reasons why, I'm sh why we're including an inverter is actually to show you how much loss there is when you're converting from DC to AC. Um, because we're also uh, going to need to convert from AC to DC. 
um, in order to get these devices to work. These devices being this laptop and this 3D printer and this projector. These are all operating off of this battery and supercapacitor combination. And uh, if you buy signal, it'll just generate enough electricity to kind of, kind of keep it going. Um, so if, um, if you're not familiar, uh, DC um, is a way of generating electricity. Well, DC is a uh, sorry direct current. Basically, it is when electricity travels over short distances. Um, alternating current is created by having a set of alternating. Sorry, I keep. I I, I wonder how how I'm doing. I, sorry, I'm rushing through this whole thing. Apologies, everyone. Okay. So direct current, um, direct current is uh, is when you have a is, sorry, direct current is created when you have a generator that has a positive and a ground uh, wire on a, wrapped around a core, and you have uh, a couple of magnets uh, uh, around it, and just like this uh, this motor, this is. An example of a DC motor. It's just a, it's just a, um, a copper wire wrapped around an iron core, with a positive and a ground uh, for magnets. Now, uh, if I was to create alternating current, what I would do is I would have, I would have two uh, wires wrapped around a core, and then four magnets. So I'd have two po uh, one positive, one ground, and then another positive and another ground. And the thing is, when you're creating alternating current, you can actually transport electricity over long distances. Now, that was one of the ideas that uh, Nikola Tesla had um, when he built the first hydroelectric uh, power plant at, um, at Niagara Falls um, in order to send electricity to New York City. Now, it is a great, it is a, alternating current is an absolutely great way of transporting electricity over long distances. But one of the things that's very problematic about it is that you can't store electricity in alternating current situations unless you're doing something like pumping water up to a reservoir and then having that water come back down through a hydroelectric dam. So it's very inefficient. So the, um, so currently the technology is such that we can have uh, solar powered systems and wind powered systems locally set up and we can have local power co-ops uh, so that we don't have to have power transported to us from long distances. Um, and uh, one of the problems with the way that, uh, that alternating current is set up currently is that uh, it's um, that the power grid that we have is largely supplied by coal plants. There's nothing inherently wrong with alternating current as a technology. In fact, it's a great way of uh, transporting electricity. But the problem is that the majority of the inputs are actually from coal and things like nuclear, um, which uh, are incredibly non-sustainable. So, um, so one of the things that I'm trying to teach with this show as I bring it to festivals is um, the difference between uh, direct current and alternating current and also showing people how to uh, power large groups of things. How am I doing on time? Five ten. Minutes. Five ten. Okay, cool. So, okay. Sorry, I'm rushing through this. If you have any questions after afterwards, I'll leave a leave a couple of moments. Um, so, um, one of the reasons why we I actually came up with the system was that I wanted to actually have a bicycle powered three D printer. So, this is the Sourcerbot. This is a 3D printer that was created by the Sufficiently Advanced Technologies group. Um, it is not just a 3D printer. What this actually is, is, a, um, it is a, the product of an app. And so the idea is that we have this app where you can plug in various, uh, various things that you would like from a 3D printer. Let's say, hypothetically, you wanted a 3D printer that was 12 inches by 48 inches by 36 inches. You can plug in these coordinates. 
And let's say that you wanted a food printing head, and you wanted a uh, you wanted a plastruder, and you wanted a Dremel head, and you wanted all these things on one uh, on one three D printer. Well, what it will do is it will spit out the STL files for the three D printed parts, like these, the cut files, um, for the DXF files, which are uh, the things that uh, make up the box, all the dependencies for the hardware which you need to cut, like the smooth rods and the uh, the threaded rods and all the programming for the Arduino uh, which is right over here this is a uh, microcontroller and the uh, yeah and that is how uh, all these things are controlled it's the interface between uh, this computer and this 3d printer that gives it uh, its instructions so um, yeah so we came up with this uh, fully open source fully free uh, free software free hardware uh, 3D printer that we're going to release the code for, hopefully by July, um, and release it out into the world under GPL. And uh, hopefully, you guys will want to make your own sourcer bot in time. Uh, so, um, one of the things that I was not able to do was get some of the goo in here. This is uh, one of our creations. This is uh, the goo extruder. This is a paste extruding head that can fit onto the X carriage of the sourcer bot. And what it does is it prints out um, paste and that type of thing. So I wonder if maybe I can show you uh, an example of it working. Okay. Let's see. And uh, the thing is, I'm not proposing that everybody power their house with, um, with bicycle power. I mean, you can do it, it might be really interesting. And it definitely is not the most efficient use of, uh, of the food that you might eat. Um, but it definitely is fun. So here, let's take a look at a bike-powered 3D printer making some food. And then I'll take questions. So one of the things I'll say about uh, the Groucho Fractal Show, it's, uh, it's an educational show. It's uh, designed to teach people about uh, open source technologies and, it, and encouraging people. Here we go. Here we go. Let me move this to the side. OK, so what you see right here is the food printing head. Uh, printing out some goo, and that is actually uh, it's printing out some raw almond paste onto a couple of cookies. Um, and uh, if you come and see the Groucho Fractal show um, in its full iteration, uh, you will uh, I guess you will get a chance to use brain computer interface as a way of generating 3D objects, which can then be printed on the 3D printer. And uh, here, let me uh, show you what I use. Oh, it's somewhere around here. Ah, yes. So I'll leave you with this. OK. This, um, for better or for worse, is the future of inter the way that we're going to interface with computers. Um, this is a NeuroSky device. It is a single sensor EEG device that allows you to, uh, allows you to uh, use neurofeedback as a way of uh, I guess controlling computers. Um, we are these kind of electrical, electrical generation plants. Uh, electricity in our body goes to our brains, and um, our brains process this information. And you can see the changes in the way that your brain processes information. So, um, if you're not looking for a ton of precision and you just want to measure changes and use those changes in order to trigger a computer to do something, let's say uh, a la using uh, MIDI as a way of controlling, uh, uh, having one device control another device. If you use the changes in the electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic uh, waves uh, due to using concentration uh, or being touched or like if you want to use those uh, changes you can uh, do some pretty interesting things like making art. Uh, 
So, okay, I have rushed through an entire thing in about 15 minutes, and uh, I, you guys are probably as confused as I am. So, okay, any questions? Yes? This is uh, more similar, like, on, on a scale to what they're doing in Germany with their local calorie generations, and you're showing this the possibility, correct? Um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, see, I'm all about local, uh, local power generation, um, because I think that it is synonymous with autonomy. That, um, if you are, uh, if you are connected to the electrical grid, um, that is owned by whatever corporations and controlled by whatever governments or which are controlled by those corporations and vice versa, um, then, uh, you're essentially, uh, I guess beholden to, uh, yeah, you're essentially beholden to those corporations who have uh, the control of uh, the means of how you uh, consume, or if you're even allowed to consume electricity, uh, and you have very little say as to how it's actually generated. Whereas the technology has gotten to the point now that we can have local power generation because solar is, uh, is at the sweet spot, it's affordable now, wind power is affordable, Battery technology is becoming excellent. Uh, uh, capacitor technology is 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 a, is uh, it's becoming more and more amazing exponentially every day. So it's a really good time to actually start thinking about autonomous uh, means of generating electricity and having small neighborhood uh, electricity generation co-ops. So that that's one of the thought processes behind that. Like Sandy, I mean, it became very evident how dependent we are on power and how yeah. Yeah. it would be in a disaster. Or right, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, like the, I guess, um, you know, comparing the electrical grid to, um, to the monopoly that, uh, the monopoly that uh, telecommunications companies have over electricity when you, oh, sorry, over, uh, sorry, over the internet. Uh, when you have a, um, when you have a series of flatulent monopolies, um, kind of controlling, you know, controlling the means of, sorry, I needed to say it, <laughs> sorry. When, when you have these companies that are just kind of like stale and attempting to grab more power, what are you going to have? You're going to have incredible inefficiency. You're going to have uh, complete failures um, because of uh, hubris, because of stupidity. Um, and so, uh, I, you know, I, th I think uh, just like the failures that sometimes happen in the power grid, and sometimes these deliberate failures, um, like we had, like we had with uh, with en uh, with Enron years ago. Um, uh, if we have um, large uh, monopolistic systems where you have a couple of people at the helm who are either stupid or greedy, you're going to have massive failures. And so, you know, for example, with uh, net neutrality, one of the, you know, if net neutrality is gutted and the uh, and corporations like Comcast or Time Warner are given um, are given control over the means by which people communicate, uh, we will not only be spending the two hours that it normally takes on, with customer service in order to get our internet restored. Um, we will be spending many more hours with customer service who know absolutely nothing um, in order to make sure that our websites aren't loading at 28K. Practically speaking, the number is 50%. Centralized anything generally is 50% less efficient. Yes. And in power, we're losing 50% from the centralized point all the way to the household. So that's why you're pro, um, that's why you're pro, uh, op you're pro uh, open systems. I'm pro localized Excellent. Yes. Very good. Any other uh, comments, questions before uh, we move on to the next? Uh, yes. Um, are you still sort of in beta mode? Is there a community that's taking you on, so to speak, where you kind of have something you want to Yeah. Um, it's con the concept behind the show is to be constantly in beta and alpha mode. Um, constantly adding new uh, technologies to the show, new prototypes, um, and then open sourcing these prototypes and giving people 
the chance to kind of take these ideas and run with them. So I do shows at, um, at festivals, at schools, at hacker spaces, and uh, different places where people would have me. Uh, you know, also just kind of random hit and run shows. Um, because the thing is, the show can be done completely off grid. I could potentially do this on a street corner and then just introduce people to some of these concepts. Do you have a team of people, or is it just you? Uh, I'm, I actually have some of the people in our team right here. This is uh, Elizabeth Jane and Brian Cohen, um, and Chicken, the dog, is right here. Chicken is actually uh, the person who dictates everything. Um, yes, yes. Um, when it is time to take a walk, that is the time to take a walk. Um, yeah, so uh, this is part of the team. Uh, there is actually a whole huge team of people that are developing stuff within these projects. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know, we're just a bunch of geeks that really like open source technologies and putting it out into the world in an artful and fun way. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everyone.